Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the uh, podcast. Um, some people say they like this little opening we've been doing. Some people say it makes them feel guilty because we ask you to uh, put a uh, comment on or share it. But don't feel guilty. We know that you've done it already if you have. So someone that's done it already said we make them feel guilty every time. But don't. We just, if we're, you've done it, don't feel guilty. Yeah, don't feel guilty. But we just, we're not talking to you, obviously. Yeah, just share it. Or don't share it. We're just at, whatever, man. We just needed your help getting more listeners. So we yeah. would like you to comment on iTunes and rate it. That helps us. But if you haven't commented or left a rating on iTunes, we're asking if you could do that. If you have commented and rated on iTunes, we're saying thank you because you can't leave more than one comment. We would like people who haven't left a comment to do that. And if you enjoy the show, if you have a moment, there's a little button on Facebook that says share. Just click it. Click it. And that's it. And that's it. Tell people, hey, listen to this. That's it. So uh, what? Today we talked about uh, Mike's trip in Jacksonville. Flying. Flying. Weird people. uh, My shows. I put a little audio one of my shows in it. Mike uh, may have or may not have. We don't know at this point whether he is going to have sent me the audio. I should be able to. If it sounds good, I'll I'll have some audio. So we may hear some of Mike's audio. See, you got to stay to the end. (laughs) Yep. <laughs> That's the end. So thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks for people that have been sharing. So um, like I always say, I don't know how to end these things, so we should just do it right now. You're listening to All in Our Heads with Joe Fernandez and Mike Gaffney. Please enjoy the show. Yo, fucking A, man. What's up? What happened there? I don't know. There was a fucking wire that was unplugged. I didn't notice. And then at, right. the, at the time of fixing it, my wife calls me to... She has technical problems at work. She changed some some wire at her job, and she can't figure out why things aren't working. So I'm like doing two at the same time. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, do you need me to cancel with Gaffney and then just go to your job now? She's right. like, no, how long is it going to take? I'm like, we usually do like an hour, hour and a half. She's like, just come by then. And then I'm sitting here, I can't get my shit fixed. And then, and then I, as I notice what the fuck's wrong with my sh- system, she texts me, um, mine's fixed. I'm like, Mother-. honestly, when I sat down to do this, I was so right. peaceful. I'm like, I can't wait yeah. to podcast. This is going to be nice. <laughs> I just, now? I just chopped up some audio from like Saturday's show. I'm like, we'll play this on the cast. It's going to be a good cast. Nice. And now I'm frustrated, but fucking it's working. So fuck it, man. It's just, it's just unbel- it's just unbelievable when when your mind doesn't work. You're like, like I know, I know this. I know. It, what's unbelievable is that you can be awesome, and my fucking system sounds either like I'm helium. I can't get the earpiece to work. My vo- my microphone won't turn on. And then I get everything set up, right to rock, and you come in with your ticket. It's like it just can't if get I don't it. listen, I'm like, can these guys get their shit together? Well, this is why when you, if you're ever a professional broadcaster, they uh, have a producer and all these technical guys for you, so you can just fucking focus on doing yeah. your shit. Right, right. Wouldn't that be great <laughs> one day, Mike? We just arrive at a studio and there's just some guy like named Pete. Yeah. Yo, Pete, volume <laughs> up. Let's do this. I call, I call him Petey. You call him Petey, I call him Pete, and then uh, and we got everything. We're rocking, no more. And even if something don't work, I just you hit that button where you talk to the controller. I'm like, yo, Pete, man. What the hell are you doing? Pete, ears <laughs> ain't working. <laughs> but until until that unlikely until day Petey, comes. Until Petey <laughs> fills out an application. Yeah. Until, <laughs> until Petey, until someone offers us a Petey, we're stuck yeah. with uh, Joe and his mush brain. <laughs> oh man so uh that's that so how you uh you were in florida all weekend how was that man it was actually a really uh it was a good time man i mean i stayed in my hotel i mean i tried to save money i didn't rent a car was i i mean i just can't go away spend an extra you know 150 bucks on a on a car just to probably have it sit in the driveway so i can have it to go to dunks you right, know what i'm saying right right I'm not sightseeing. I'm not going to Jacksonville Zoo. Yeah, yeah. It's not happening. So they were hooking me up with a ride back and forth from the club. The club's like two miles from the hotel. So they were – the comics were picking me up and bringing me to the gig. Well, that's good. So I'm like, I don't need a car. I freaking took a cab. I took a cab to Dunks. 
which was about a mile and a half down the road. But I would normally have walked that. I wouldn't mind walking it, but there's no way to walk. A cab? What are you? We're not in an Uber world. What's with cabs? You got a cab? Well, there was a cab guy right out front. So he was like, okay. How much was that cab ride for a dunk? Not, same shit. Seven bucks. Oh, seven same bucks. Same like an Uber. Did you just hang at dunks all day? Like, uh, seven bucks. I'm just going to drink here all day. <laughs> no, I have not bring me. I had I stayed at an extended stay, so I had like a whole fr- kid kitchen and fridge and everything like that. Oh, so nice. I went and I bought like three iced coffees, a mm. clip, come back to my fridge, watched some television, watched a lot of uh, forensic files so I know how to commit a murder the right way. Yeah. They you always know? forget something. Jesus Christ, amazing. Yeah. yeah. I just like I, yeah. a, a dog hair. Like if you ever killed anybody, make sure to Cody hairs aren't on you because it, yeah, it's he just, will fuck you. He will fuck you. It's amazing how people don't think like you just like I I watched one the other night like a Dateline. Yeah, this dude like murdered his mistress because he didn't right. whatever she was pregnant with his kid. He didn't want none of that shit. And then uh, yeah, yeah. takes you to like some cavern in the desert and like th- like kills or throws her in the cavern, but also through the fucking sprite bottle that they shared like a little while before that down there. Right. So I had a little bit of DNA spit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then like uh, he took photos like a couple of days before of that area. So they're like, so the police are like, oh, he's been in this area. So maybe we'll just check this area. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's just like unbelievable. Like this dude's like, you're planning a murder. Do you need a photo session? <laughs> like stick with the program. Like he, he made a, he made a torch. Right. Like out of a T-shirt around a stick because he yeah, threw yeah. her down, was going to throw some gas down right. and then throw the torch down to like torch it. Right. Right. But he, this is all sounds really not but like funny. He, you know? <laughs> no, but I'm saying, no, but the motherfucker like he he like the fucking torch like fell down before he can dip it in gas and light it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. So he just fucking left and then. The oh. fucking T-shirt was his T-shirt with his DNA on it. Like this fucking like, guy. Like this <laughs> you're just sitting there. You're like, why don't you just call the police and be like, I'm going to go murder somebody. <laughs> and you better beat me to it. <laughs> What's your name? Christopher. I live at 213 Mockingbird Lane. And I'm good. Uh, actually, I am I just killed her. <laughs> but you, I mean, it's my word against yours. <laughs> I know I called you, but there ain't no clues going to be there, motherfucker. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lead you right to me. <laughs> Is that a fire alarm in the background? Yeah, I just set her on fire. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh-huh. fucking. Yeah, I watch. I mean, I'm watching it, and like, it's just, yeah, it's amazing at the things. But before we get into that. I just want to talk about the, the club real quick. Yeah, no, yeah. I, we don't need to get really into forensic can. files. No, yeah, I, I can talk about that. I mean, I watched it for three days, so I can talk about it. Uh, I, every time I kept, like, a case would end, I'm like, all right, this is the last one. Just so you know, the forensic files at HLN channel, there's only, I think, maybe 50 episodes. They just loop them. That's the, oh, You'll see the same episodes over and over. It's not a lot of new episodes. Yeah. You know, the thought that I had, though, I'm like... Like, without all these fucking dumb murderers, man, these shows would have just no ratings. Like, I wonder if, like, if, like, the, like, murders started, like, getting down. They're like, come on, man, we need some fucking stories, man. (laughs) Then they call, like, one of the segment producers. Can you whip up a murder somewhere? Yo, you got, like, can you, like, nudge uh, a cousin or something? You know what? I'm going to kill my aunt. I don't like my aunt. I'm going to kill my aunt. (laughs) I'm going to go tell cousin Paul that his wife's cheating on him. And maybe he should murder her. Maybe. (laughs) That'd be a great that like forensic files like TV producer nudges cousin to kill wife with a lie for ratings. Be like holy shit, this is like a whole full circle like show within the show about the show. <laughs> There's two sets of cameras. The producers' cameras on the criminal, and then like another investigator on the producer filming yeah. the like, <laughs> yeah. The other producer that had no ideas, like doing his cufflinks at the Emmys. Like if we don't win for this motherfucker, <laughs> I don't know what we got to do, man. We had the show in the show. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. Dateline ain't even doing that. Twenty twenty ain't doing that. Fucking forensic files. So. The, the name of the club is they call it, it's called the Comedy Club of Jacksonville. Now it's a it's good place to call the Comedy Club in Jacksonville. 
It's called, I know. That's why he did it. And now it's all called the all new comedy club of Jackson of Jacksonville. Oh, the all new. <clears throat> but um, the new like the newer guy, the owner has taken over now. He's not the guy who booked me. His name is Dean Roberts. The original guy who booked me is Steve. I can't think of Steve's last name, but Steve booked me, and uh, I guess Steve owned it for like four years. They brought in Dean as a partner a few months back, and now Steve is leaving, and Dean's keeping it. Uh, but Steve took care of me because he's the he's the one who booked me, so he took kind of took care of me. Mm-hmm. But the place sits like around three fifty. It's like a big. Perfect square room, huge square room, but no obstructions. Not it's perfect. I mean, it's like a perfect yeah, box. Like if you were gonna build a comedy club, like yeah, just this is the box. This is the box. This is it. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a little a little high. See, I'm not too high, but it's a little big. Right. It's a little cavernous feeling, but once the lights dim, the sh- they got a, a nice big stage. Uh, they built a big stage, like you know, a nice stage. Um, once the lights get dim, it's and there's little candles on all the tables. It gets intimate. You can't really see that. The lighting system's great. The sound system's awesome. Um, it's doing it and, right. Yeah, it was done right. Now, um, there was two like I met a couple of comics. This guy Antoine Murphy, Keshad Vini, and this guy Doug Canny. They're the three guys who were on the shows with me. Uh-huh. Um, uh, all of them knew KP Burke. Oh, well, KP's the uh, Jacksonville Comedy Festival winner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I met the runner up, uh, Shay Clemens. He came to do a guest spot on Friday and we he said he's really good friends with KP and I was like, Yeah, everybody busts his balls about that Jacksonville. And he's like, Yeah, I was the runner up on that. And yeah, KP beat like, him with energy. Huh? KP yeah. beat him in the energy category. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I was runner up on that. And I was like, Oh, you should have won, actually. I see KP's act. <laughs> no, but it was a really cool club. Now, this is not going to be politically correct, but um, the club, the club lately has been skewing more urban. Mm. They do urban careful, nights. Careful, careful. No, I'm kidding. Not. I'm just it's, it's, they're, they're, they do like they were doing like an. What urban do you mean night. by urban? What do you mean by that? Black. Oh, okay, I just want to make sure. Oh, you thought in I case the gonna... listeners didn't know. Yeah, they know, but in I the comedy American scene, it's Mike. urban. Okay. They call them urban nights. All right. And um, they were doing Thursday nights. They call it Throwback Thursday, and it was an urban lineup, and they would fill it, you know, with like a DJ, and it was like total like an, an urban room. Yeah. You know? And apparently, once you when they start doing that, they start to to start leaning towards more shows being urban. Urban. Yeah. So when I came in on Thursday. They normally do that throwback Thursday night, and there's one host, and he has like five, maybe four or five black comedians on the show. <clears throat> well, because I was the headliner, they didn't want to promote it as a throwback Thursday, so they didn't know how to do it. I guess they just put it <laughs> up as a regular show. Yeah. And we didn't get a lot of turnout. We only had 12 people mm. at the show, but 12 black people. Yeah. And maybe 14. But black 14 people black love people. you. And I killed. Of course, I black people love Mike. Mike's almost black. <laughs> I think it's from growing up in Jersey City. Especially if you dance, if there's a song that comes up that brings you up. I've seen you. I like, come up to a song and start dancing, and like black ah. people are like they start like doing the Arsenio Hall fist bump. <laughs> They're like, I think he's black. I'm gonna like I can picture. I'm like, you know what? I see that he's white, but in my mind, he's black for the next 45 <laughs> minutes. Look at those moves. <laughs> you know what? Like I said, they brought me up to songs and I didn't dance yeah. at all. And I was like, I'm like, I remember times when I remember at NA shows, I would dance. Oh, people! If if I, I have if I search, I have archives. I can post. The, I can post Mike. <laughs> you won't see any of his act. I'll just post his intro and his dancing, and he he has done it. <laughs> so if I can dig it up, you be sure it's going to be on the All in Our Heads podcast <laughs> Facebook page. You remember that when we did that that thousand seater at. For what do you call it? Oh, dude, you were boogieing, man. Yeah. I was like, I don't even think Mike's going to do jokes. I think Mike is now dancing with the Mike stars. doing a dancing showcase. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's doing breaking three. <laughs> breaking three electric comedy. Uh, so I, I did say that about, but I, um, but the point was the Dean was like, holy shit. Like, 
like I was the first white dude to ever be able to do that in Jacksonville. Like it was like, no, this isn't. And I'm not. All right, I'm not a guy who's trying to sound like I'm a black dude. No, I'm just being me. But I know how to the sensibility of of my life and my his my the way I grew up is the same. Like we're the same people. And once they realize that I'm funny and I'm talking about kids the way I talk about kids or the way I talk about flying, they're like me too. Like it's not you, like yeah, you grew up in an urban environment. That's who you are. Right. Naturally, you have that edginess that. That angst, right, right. that yeah, yeah, that thing. You, like you'd probably be weird at like a country club, <laughs> like oh uh, yeah, I you know, know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Connor, but was, pass but me really the butter. Good and like the the owner was like, damn man, and like he said he was talking to like urban com- comics from like, Chicago, and he's like, yo, this motherfucker Mike Gaffney, holy shit. And then so Friday was Thursday was fourteen people, black people. Uh-huh. And DJ and most the whole audience. I was the whitest motherfucker there. But Doug Canny is white too. He has like he has a hair in a ponytail. He's got tats. He's a rock, old school rocker. Yeah, and he was white too. He was on the show. Um, and then Friday night was like eighty people, all white. Well, they heard you were in town. Like, holy shit! This is the all new Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all white great audience and then saturday was about 170 people i would say 60 40 uh, okay and it was just a great i just love the mix man i love the people there and um they were supposed to have two shows saturday but they canceled it like a month ago two months ago they never decided they weren't doing it they forgot to take it off the website yeah and we had two people show up for the 10 o'clock show mm-hmm and the guy was like, I just came for you because I, I saw you on Last Comic Standing. And uh, me and my wife wanted to go to a show tonight. And Arsenio Hall's in town, but we decided to come see you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. See, black people do love you. Yeah, yeah. A black, I, I usually do go with black people, too. It, do you, I feel when I kill for a predominantly black audience, I, I, I feel so much better about my, my act than an all-white audience. I'm like, yeah, man, yeah. this stuff is good. Yes, because they sh- they they're a tough crowd. Yeah, and they. Sh- I did. I did a Conor McGregor it, arm walk it. after I fucking get yeah, off stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like how he enters the ring. That's how I get yeah, off yeah. after I kill in front of black people. <laughs> like look at that white boy walking away with his arms swinging. <laughs> no, it's a uh, because when they laugh, it's louder. There's it's it's more like they are. You could see they're physically enjoying the show. Yeah. And they don't fuck mind telling you. And if they're not enjoying the show, they don't mind they don't telling mind you either. <laughs> not that that <laughs> si- that that white silence of like, like yeah. white people just get so silent. You're like, come on, at least <laughs> boo me. Let me know I'm getting through in some way. <laughs> <laughs> but the club turned out it was really good. This black guy comes up at the end of the show and he's like, um, he's like Saturday. Night. He's like, hey man, no disrespect. No disrespect, and I was like, "Yeah, no, no disrespect." <laughs> I feel like there's going to be a lot of disrespect coming right now, yeah. but no disrespect. Go, and he's like, "I don't know why he thought he needed to start with no disrespect for this statement." He's like, "Man, you was you a white boy, man? You were funnier than the black dudes." And I'm like, "I don't know who this is supposed to be disrespecting." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, it is kind of racist that you're saying it white and black. Um. But I should have been I, like, well, I, this is the start of making America great again. I'm just saying <laughs> I follow the leader. <laughs> but he go. But what I did say to the owner, I was like, the reason is, and unfortunately, either way, it works on both ends. If a white audience member, not comic, like not a comedian friendly audience member, sees a flyer with predominantly black people on the flyer, unfortunately, in their minds, that's going to be a deaf comedy jam kind of show yeah and it could be w- wrong as hell yeah but especially that, if they don't have conventional names well what, like any if it's like you know it's like you know hosted by butters uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> with dj pete rock yeah. headlined by passion you're like what? Yeah, yeah. Like, i don't well, know I man don't <laughs> <laughs> i don't know you got any steve harvey's or yeah. or uh <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Butters and passion. Kyle Groom. You got a Kyle Groom. Oh, yeah, Kyle sounds nice. I don't know if I can relate with Butters and passion. <laughs> but that's the, 
that's the truth. And then if there's a white dude on the flyer, and, and this just could be not every black person feels this way, but they see a white dude coming to the stage and like, ah, corny. He's a corny. He's corny. Yeah. That's how they Especially feel Especially if they come up too high energy, like, what's up, motherfucker? Like, oh, yeah, God, no. the dude's doing the fucking left to right head bob because he sees fucking black people. Yeah, he doesn't know how to just be himself. <laughs> he does, the white guy's doing a no you didn't head yeah. as he gets up on stage. <laughs> <laughs> left to right. Hey! <laughs> but those guys, maybe, they can maybe work it, but it's the people who, there's, the, there's white people out there just boring. And they're funny, but the, a black audience will not enjoy them. They don't, what I've noticed, they don't like pandering. Yeah, no. Like the, they'll like if you're a good joke teller, if you got good jokes, but yeah, they don't yeah. like pandering, like begging for love. Right, but I'm saying they also think on for I'm not saying they all do, but a lot of black regular black audience members, not comedian, not comic nerds, regular black audience members will see a white comic and think corny, already corny, it's just gonna be corny. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Oh, you know what I'm saying I believe because it. most of the comics that they black <clears throat> comics, black comedian fans like are a different comic. They just are not. They're not. In no offense to, they're not a Mark Norman. And I'm not yeah. saying that they won't like Mark Norman. I'm just saying they're not that. Right, right. You know, most of the 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 number one comics in the black community are are a little more different energy, a little different comics. So they feed into that. Yeah. And when they see a white dude, they're like, "Oh, this guy's gonna be corny." Yeah, and then you start telling like the guy who's on a it's show. Just like w- it's just like when we judge if like even as white people we go up, it's like you see a guy get on stage with a guitar, you're like, here uh, we go. Yeah, like if they ain't Stephen Lynch, like get the fuck off of the shit. <laughs> <laughs> and the kid on the show, me Antoine, uh, he said because like he told, he was talking to his friends and friends were like you know something about white comics. He's like, you know what, man, you don't listen to them because a lot of Good white comics are talking about shit we all relate to. How can you not relate to having kids? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. How you can't relate to being on a plane? How do you can't relate to that? Right. You know, if you're already shutting it out because you don't want to. Yeah. It's like, so once they, once you break them open a little bit, then they're like, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then they're, they're like, oh shit, this is so like, I just went up there. Both all like the first time I was like the guy the DJ was playing music and I just stood there like really white in front of the microphone I was like like in a music playing and I go I don't really know my I don't know what I'm supposed to do right I just want to can I tell my jokes man can I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this music am I supposed to dance this music <laughs> <laughs> and they liked that I was so white that I didn't know what to do to an intro yeah you know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and then I went off like on just. Well, I don't even know what I went off on in the beginning, and they say we're right on board. They were right on board once they seen that I was totally comfortable in my own skin. Right. That was the thing, man. Once they seen I was totally comfortable and I wasn't scared that there was only fourteen black people in this room. Right. You know what I'm saying? That is where they. It's not that they sense fear, but you're if you're not confident, like well, they like confidence. Man. You, have to have con- you have to act like you know, like you belong there. You can't be right. like I'm saying. You can't. Ask, you can't be like looking like you're asking them for permission to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. You have to bring it. Right. The mo- the con- the the consistent review I always get for black people for if I have like predominantly black audiences, they always go, "Yo, you fucked up, man. Yo, you fucked <laughs> yeah, up right. in the head, man." Like <laughs> that's <laughs> for some reason that's a black. It's consistently the review I get. They laugh. Right, right. They show me they li- they like me by laughing. Then they go, "Yo, you fucked up in the head, man." Right, right. And I'm like, "You right." <laughs> Man, <laughs> then I then I pop block and I walk away. <laughs> it's just what I do around black people. <laughs> and then they throw my business card in the ground, like, oh god. <laughs> it was um, yeah, it was a good time, man. I want to thank Jacksville. It was really, it was fun. That's awesome, man. So yeah. I'm sure they'll have you back after you killed it all those. Oh, that, yeah, that guy, the, the, the new owner was like, "Man, you're." So he's the yeah. booker. He's not. He doesn't go through like a booking agency and stuff. He just no. The, the guy, like, I don't know how they're working it, but I'm pretty sure the owners are booking it because he was asking me about certain contacts for people. So I'm pretty sure he books it. Oh, that's good. That's yeah, good. good stuff, man. Fucking Jacksonville. Yeah, it wasn't bad, man. It was. It was a. Uh, next time I'll rent a car, maybe get out a little more, go eat some places, you know, instead of a. Uh, you know, just eating in my room. Um, 
Yeah, it'll. I, yeah. I need to conserve this time. I mean, like, like it's just it's holidays. I don't need to spend money to have a car sitting in the driveway at my leisure. Yeah, but you, yeah, but you're still better off just Ubering for seven bucks. I mean, you're gonna, yeah. you're gonna even a cheap car. You're gonna spend fifty bucks a day. Right. Uber to the movies. Correct. Uber back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fourteen dollars in a day. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? Or Uber to an area where there's a lot of shit going on. Right. Mall. There was, there was you know, places with malls and like I could have yeah. gone anywhere. Yeah. Go there and because you know yeah. what's gonna happen. It, just like when I go on the road and I think I'm gonna eat a lot, I stock up my room with food. Then I'm apparently. I I just I'm a fucking but anorexic. I I, I, yeah, I'm on a diet. I'm not hungry at all now. I have like like yeah, a yeah. bag of apples <laughs> and like a cow and a water. You're like, what did I think? I think was gonna happen. <laughs> you're gonna have this Look, car. Your and you're gonna want to sleep. Supposed to be here a week. I you're, thought it was here. What am I? You're gonna run a fifty dollar a day car and then sleep all day. You're gonna be like, I'm yes, just not even wanting 100%. to go. Any. And then I'm gonna make myself want to get out because I have a car. Like just go, man. yeah. Like justify. Let me go drive around and waste gas money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to no, justify the fifty bucks. Uber, man. That's what's <laughs> fucking designed for people like us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a good time. Good time, man. Anybody's in Jacksonville, go to the club, man. It's a good club. They got f- they good good food. It's a nice. It's a the whole around place is nice. Yeah. Now Jacksonville, I I, I never looked at it on the map. That's nowhere near the beach, right? That's just like yeah. Oh, it is now. Yeah, it's right. There's right on the beach. Oh, it's on the beach. I didn't even know that. But where my where the club was, it was in in where like maybe like five miles off the beach. Oh, okay. So like it's like you know you come over like I think there's like a bay. You come over a bay area, and then you're into where regular city of Jacksonville. The day I landed, I saw I saw like police cars everywhere. Like, and then I get to my room, and there was a fucking bank robbery. Where the guy had like a hostage situation, like in town. And yeah. Like, oh, okay, nice. Welcome to Jacksonville. I hate when they say that the club, like, there's other, some clubs where it's like they'll say it's this club, it's in this city, and then you're like, and you get to that city, you're like, oh, this is like gonna be fun city to walk around, but it's not really yeah. in this city. It's like yeah, yeah. over the bridge, where like, yeah. like in <laughs> in some shit part of town, you're like. Uh-huh. It's dead. There's nobody there. And you're like, you know, I was just driving around that city. There's a lot of people over there. You should probably move this over there. <laughs> Where all those college people are walking around. I don't know. You know that. But, or but tell Jacksonville is pretty fucking big. I mean. Yeah, sprawled out. It's huge because it, it, took, it took 35 minutes of just straight driving to get to the airport. Oh, uh, okay. Like, you know, just not even like, you know, traffic driving, just driving. Mm. So it's pretty spread out. Nice. Was the weather good? Was it hot? It was not. It was perfect. It was. Uh, it was a little. I mean, what? Sixty-eight. Yeah. Seventy. It was nice, man. Nice, nice. And then you came back and you did uh, that. Did you do like an early show yesterday? Oh. I, I was going to come yeah. out to it, but I was tired. And <laughs> now <laughs> I was tired, and we and it was just. Just said I was going to come out to it, but I didn't. No, it was Justin's birthday. We had birthday cake and oh, stuff, but yeah. we got done with that early. But I was like, maybe I'll go out there, but I'm like, nah. <laughs> was it good? No, it was good. It was, uh, I think, pretty much sold out. Right? I don't think there was any seats left in that joint. Yeah, I saw the picture because I performed there. Looks like they turned the room a different, like yeah, angle. They set a different angle. Yep. Nice. The, the last time I performed there, they had it like long ways. Yeah, like you, at your side to side, kind of. Mm-hmm. It was good. No. no, it was good. They were a good group too, man. They were real good, actually. Yeah, I was spent, man. I was spent. You like flew I, home and then drove to a gig? Yeah. Flew oh. home, came home, took a nap, got ready, went to a gig. And I, I came home and I tried to I, – I didn't watch any Walking Dead because I got home too late for it. Mm-hmm. And then I tried to put on Westworld at 12 o'clock. It's a season finale at 11 o'clock. And it went for – it was like one of those season finales, hour and a half instead of an hour. Oh, okay. And I got to the hour mark and I could not. I had one eye open. And I was just trying to watch, and I put the fucking like the guide on. I'm like, "When does this end?" I'm like, "Twelve thirty-five. Ah, oh, there's no fucking way. I gotta go." And I just turned it off and passed out like instantly. I don't even remember. You ever like, you know, I'm gonna try to fall asleep right now. I don't remember that part. Yeah, I that's how I was last night. <sighs> out. Yeah, cause me, Carrie and I were watching The Walking Dead, and we're both falling asleep. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even know what's going on. Yeah, don't you hate that? Like when you're not, you're so like out of it. You're not really grasping. Like why it. am I fighting for this? Like I have, yeah. <laughs> like I'm acting like this is the last thing I'll ever see, and then I'm dead tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> like I gotta get this one in. 
yeah, like yeah, I'm saying goodbye. To, no, I fucking shut oh. it off. We're gonna. I said we're gonna start from the beginnings. I don't even know what the fuck was going yeah, on. Yeah, that's the way I was like, last week's I episode. I fight sleep. I fought in sleep to the point where the remote falls out of my hand. Like it yeah, just yeah. Dun, dun, and I'm like, ah. Oh. Right, let me rewind. It's like just let go. <laughs> just give your your body is telling you things. <laughs> or like I'll be in bed scrolling Facebook or Instagram, and I'm exhausted. I'm like I'm get, getting nothing from this. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? Why are you prolonging? Yeah, yeah. Ah, I'm a weirdo. So you didn't watch last week's episode of Walking Dead was the same way for me. Even though I was kind of tired, I was watching it sitting up in my desk. But I just couldn't get with it last week. I was just like, my brain couldn't stay in, engaged. I was like, I don't want to do this. I didn't even watch it. Like, I turned it off and then I watched it in the airport. Uh, we watched last week's yesterday before we tried yeah, watching last night. So I liked last week's. Even this is how I know when there's not a great episode of Walking Dead. I hear nothing on Facebook about it. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, when I see no interact, nobody saying anything, I'm like, oh, they must be introducing new characters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if there's another lion in this Yeah. One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I actually liked it. No, me too. But I could not en- I fully enjoy it. Then I watched it in the airport uh, before leaving yesterday, coming home at like five. I got there like 4.30 and my flight left at six. Oh, okay. And like I get there an hour and a half early thinking like it's going to be Newark Airport, you know, long lines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, Hi. What's up? Shoes off. Shoes back on. Sitting, waiting. I was like, what uh, the fuck? That was the quickest line ever. Jacksonville? Like, yeah, the black guy was like, hey, you're the only one online. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, well, you're used to living in like like a huge metropolitan area. That, yeah. Like one of the busiest airports in the nation. <laughs> yeah, I'm planning for like this long. And I was like right in. I was like there. I got to the airport at 430. I was at my gate by like 436. I was like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and so I watched The Walking Dead there. Nice. And I was on a JetBlue flight with a packed flight of not, I don't think it was, I think maybe one empty seat of all what seemed to me first time travelers, like none of them can get their shit together. Yeah. They were rude. They fucking had no idea how to be around other people. Mm hmm. Four rows in the back. Like I was right towards the end, so there was only four rows behind me to the back of the plane, and there was like an Arab, like a gypsy couple, like a husband and wife, and uh, they were like when the plane landed, they were they grabbed their big heavy bags and were standing right next to me the whole time before the doors opened. The fucking four rows behind me is already next to me. Mm. When how the fuck do you think that works? How do you think you're going before me? Yeah. How do you think you debark the plane <laughs> before me? Right, the right. fuck back there. But his bag was all over me. He had like a, his sweater was like that skin tight, like sweater looks like he's from Kakistan. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, like. <laughs> Kakistan. <laughs> like, fucking guy. I was like, Jesus Christ. And he's like right next to me. His smelly. Boy. I just like the whole time. I'm like, I kept saying like to my, talking to myself, I'm like. Yeah, the door's not open. The door's not open. We're not going. Then we're not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. <laughs> not going anywhere. They're not gonna not like what? Let you leave the plane if you're not up in line? We you, you get just stuck. Get gonna go back to Jacksonville. Like, <laughs> assholes, man. I don't get people, man. I don't get people. As soon as they make the announcement, oh, uh, we're gonna be begin boarding. Everyone's up. <laughs> like you have a seat, right? You purchase a seat. Yeah, then that seat's gonna be there when you get there. Yeah. And they're not leaving. They're not leaving you. No. It's, I think some people rush to get the overhead bin. Yeah, but I always, you know what I do? Fuck it. I'm, They'll check I'm it for you for free if you wait yeah, and exactly. give it to you at the end. Yeah. You don't have to put it up. Nope. I. They ask. Well, if it's a packed flight, they're like, hey, would any volunteers want to check their bag? Fuck Here you yeah. go. Here's my bag. Bye-bye now. Yeah. And I don't have to worry about it. Now, the only thing that pissed me off this last flight is that it wasn't ready. At the, you had to go to... To the, oh, to the actual carousel. Yeah, that was a, that too, I like, don't care no more, man. I'm tired of carrying shit in the airport. Yeah, like when, exactly. when I when I go, like if I'm going on the road by myself, I'll take the one little bag and pop it up. But like when I go on vacation with my wife, it's like 
we fit everything into a massive suitcase. Check, check that mother. Oh, you're yeah. spending the money? Yes, I'm on vacation. Yes. I don't yes. want to fucking carry anything. I can spend 25 bucks for this. Yes, it's fucking no 50. I don't give a fuck, yeah. man. I'm right. pretending I'm rich for seven days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I consider vacation. <laughs> exactly. Why would you want to make yourself eff- an effort? Like I put the bag down. I have my backpack. I put my backpack in the overhead. Pop my shoes off. Sleep. I'm not. There's no stress. I'm not worrying about toting a bag down the fucking aisle. No. When I went to Aruba, I had my phone and my earbuds. I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was great going through fucking security. Yeah, yeah. Phone, earbuds, shoes. Yep. Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> people suck man i i hate I, I was on a plane one time where the motherfucker i was it was coming home from texas and there was like a chess team ahead what? of me a chess team that was there How do you even know it's a chess team unless they because they had all their big their trophies team. which which filled up all the overheads <laughs> oh that's the only other way you know that's a chess team <laughs> well they were all holding <laughs> trophies i go what would you guys win <laughs> <laughs> like chess a, i'm like that's yeah. a big trophy for chess like they all had big ones like it was like like they were all champions well, they were the champions i was on the <laughs> i was like great now i'm gonna be on a plane that's going down i'm on the chess team champions <laughs> <laughs> i said this last night i didn't nobody really laughed but i was just talking about my internal thoughts about flying and like i'm always i know it's fucked up man but i do you ever see those shows why planes go down you ever watch that show, Why Planes Crash? No, nor do I want to. Yeah, no. No. But there's a, there's a show. It's like it's I don't watch Monsters on, Inside Me either. I don't want to know. It's either on CNN. It's like a show that comes on. It's on one of CNBC or, or the Weather Channel, and it's show Why Planes Crash. And they'll have like hour marathons of it, right? Uh-huh. And there's this one guy, little white, white mustache, smart. And he has like a deep voice. He talks about why technical things happen with planes. And I'm always thinking when I'm on the plane, I'm like, our episode, flight sixteen seventy eight. You know what I'm saying? Oh why yeah. Why it went down over Jacksonville, and this guy giving the commentary on why it went down. The left wing. What happened was a ball bearing because it's so simple, man. It's never the wing fell off. Never, man. It's no. never. No. It's never. It's always there was a spring that fell out of one of the fucking hydro things, and you're like, what? What a spring? A spring. A spring that was supposed to be inspected six months ago fell out because it was rusty, and that was the cause of the hydraulics not working. You're like, oh my god, a spring! Oh, that's so scary, man. But they're, they're a lot of they're not; those are always like foreign country flights that crash. Like you, yeah. it doesn't happen in America. Wrong answer. What? What was the last commercial airliner to crash in America? I don't know. Exactly, they don't happen. Dude, if you, even if that happened last week, you would know. Other than last week, when would you know? No, because that's, that's right how now? rare. That's big fucking news, dude. Yeah, I know. When was the last one, though? A few months back, right? A few months back. It's been years. No, it hasn't been years, you idiot. No, Google that shit. I'm not Googling nothing. I'll Google that shit. You can Google that shit. U.S. commercial airliner crashes. <laughs> okay. We'll talk while I Google. All right, Joe is Googling. <laughs> <laughs> you really know how to fill that dead air. <laughs> uh, I believe there was a plane crash. I uh, well, like commercial airliners, you said, right? Commercial, yeah, I, I, yeah. Private, you're on your own, but commercial, like with people and shit. Well, it's still people. In the okay, when was the last time a plane crashed in the U.S.? Here we go. Google says February twelfth, two thousand nine. Colgan Air Flight 3407 was flying from Newark, New Jersey to Buffalo when it crashed Listen. into a house in Clarence, New York. All 49 individuals on the plane were killed. That was a small plane now. How many people? 49. That's a that's that's like that's like a that's 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 not so, much. Yeah, right. And it was leaving from where? From uh, Newark. Newark to Buffalo, but that was a small plane now. That was a small Newark, plane. Though. That wasn't Newark. A, no, but that wasn't a commercial airliner. Hey, man, How many 49 co- people on there? What? You there are 49 friends? Huh? There's 49 people on it. It's, it's, fucking, that's, it's a small commercial airliner, but it's a commercial. It's not 49 buddies. Yeah, I think Sully was the last one, no? Sully? Was he commercial or was that a private? Not, yeah, it was commercial. That was like was a big United? fucking like... Uh... I think it was United, right? 
Is that the one he hit the Canadian geese? Yeah. Fucking Sully. The hero. Not a hero. He's the one who hit the birds. Can't be a hero if you're the one who did the bird. You hit the bird. That's like me setting the house on fire and telling everybody to get out. I'm a hero. Why did you set the house on fire? Okay, it says, although plane crashes in the U.S. are rare, there have been a handful of fatal accidents since September 11th, 2001. Okay. Here's some of the deadliest. I don't want to hear The one I just showed, 2009. But 2009 was the last one. Before that, 2006. Uh, That was a Delta flight. Uh, I'm just trying to... Yeah, so 2009 was the last one. We're doing pretty good, man. We're we're due. due. We're due. That's why I always look to see how rusty the bolts are, how fat the pilot is. (laughs) Like, uh... (laughs) <laughs> How fat the call? Like if there's two fat pilots, you're like, come on, man! Can I get a, like a soldier looking guy? <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I always that's another thing I always think. I know this is messed up. I know it's messed up. But every time I'm in an airplane airport waiting to go on a flight, I'm hoping <laughs> that the news on the TV will be like, uh, you know, a big airline just crashed just mm-hmm. now. Because how often do you see two plane crashes in the same day? Other than 9-11, planes just don't drop out of the sky. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of like hope that another plane crashed that day. And then I'm like, oh, well, we're good. Did you ever look at the other passengers and be yes. like, are these like the thing you'd see in a movie? Like, do these look, a- like, do they look yes. like they're about to die? <laughs> yes. No, absolutely. Like I have this weird thing where I feel like I'll visually know. Like, like no, imagine. Their story. Their documentary about that guy. Like, let me see him. Oh my God, he's got a mustache. I mean, someone's going to play him yeah. with a mustache. Are you anybody here going to see their long lost brother? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anybody about to have a baby that needs to get back for that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anybody? Anybody? Has anyone been just told they're about to have a baby? Yeah. <laughs> you are? I'm out of here. <laughs> it's always a part of it. This yeah. is Steve Sweeney. He, uh, 24 years old, just was notified that he was going to be a father, perished in flight 6502. Yeah. Yeah. Now, no recent baby announcements, no long lost <laughs> connections. <laughs> yeah. No going to see your adopted parents for the first time in 20 years. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, what's that? You're a Muslim man. Can I see your uh, search history on your phone, please? <laughs> Pornhub. All right, he's good. He's good. He's good. Real ones don't so, do that shit. I got this guy next to me who I thought he looked Arabic. I mean, he looked Middle Eastern. He looked Arabic, and not Middle Eastern because he had no face. So he looked Arabic though. And uh, he sits in the middle. He's in the middle seat. I have my headphones on, and I'm watching The Walking Dead. Uh huh. I'm watching the last five minutes of The Walking Dead. You can clearly see I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. Right? The plane was just sat. We just sat. He just got in, sat down, and he's like, doesn't know planes, apparently. He's like, oh, and he taps me. And I'm like, what, man? He taps me again. I like have to take my earbuds out. I'm like, what? You don't see these things in my head? Ooh. And he's like, um, do they have Wi-Fi? I'm like, what? Uh, I don't know, man. They did when I came here. So I put my earpiece back in, tap again. I'm like, Rah. He's like, was it? Is it free? I'm like, it was when I came. But we're on the ground still. We're still at the gate. So you're not getting Wi-Fi yet. Right. And he's like, okay. Earbud in. Now he's looking around. I see him looking around, looking all over the place. I'm like, fuck, here we go. Tap again. I'm like, what, man? What? And he's like, do they have a place to plug in their phone, your phones? I'm like, no. I wanted to say... Is there, how do you, do you think I work for JetBlue? How is it you're asking me these questions about a plane that we're both sitting on that you can clearly take your fucked up eyeballs and go looking for the plug yourself? Yeah. Why do I got to look for it for you? So then I, now I'm in and I'm watching a movie. It was about an hour in. I'm watching a movie on my tablet. Tap, tap. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, best friend? What is it you need? Mm. He's like, Are we, can we go to the bathroom? I'm like, yeah. Have you never been? How old are you, man? How'd you even get to this country? You're not from this country. Did you, did you fly that time? <laughs> Holy shit, man. 
But the, the whole plane looked like a bunch of people just staring around like it was their very first time on a plane. Maybe. They were annoying and rude. Maybe it was. Ah, no, they were all foreigners, man. Unless they walked to this country, there's, they've been on planes before. Yeah. They, but they all act like they didn't. Anyway. Sorry I seem antisocial, but I have my earbuds in. I was trying to like relax. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't like to be bothered either. It's like, don't talk to me. Yes, no, I'm good, man. I remember being on planes before iPods and like before TVs in the fucking screen, like in the seat, and you're just yeah, like, yeah. like, 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 you're like, yo, what, so what do you do? It's like, I try to mind <laughs> my own business, okay? And you should too. <laughs> That's what I do for a living. Now fucking shut the fuck up. They're all out of pillows. <laughs> it's like uh, League of Their Own. My favorite scene is when... uh. John Lovitz is on the train, and the guy's talking to him, and the guy's, and the guy's like, "We tripled sales three times just in this quarter." And he's like, ha, ha, ha. "If I had your life job, I would kill myself." Yeah. <laughs> and the guy's like, looks at stairs like, "Hold up, I'm gonna go see if I can dig up a gun." <laughs> he, he walks away. He's like, "Every time with these people, I'm just too nice." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Dude, I heard one of the funniest joke jokes the other day. I haven't heard like a funny joke joke in a long time. Yeah. I was listening to Dom Herrera's podcast. Okay. And he told, cause he's like, he's like, what I like about joke jokes is like when they're short, like a nice quick joke joke. That was, he yeah, said yeah. it. So he goes, uh, this guy walks into a psychiatrist's office. The psychiatrist goes to him. So uh, what seems to be the problem? He's like, I don't know, man. I seem to be having a tough time making friends, you fat piece of shit. <laughs> I was like, that's like the best joke joke I've heard in years. And I don't even think it's a joke joke. It's probably something Diamond Diam I already came up with. But it's, per it's perfect. It's perfect. Because it just yeah. ends. You don't even, it's just like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went nowhere. Just, <laughs> it's just, just call the guy. <laughs> that's funny. He's having a tough time making friends. Hey, did you see Michael Chase special? I did. It was good. It was good. Yeah. I thought it was good, man. Yeah, it was. Some some really good jokes, man. Some smart jokes. Like, wow, that fucking smart ass joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I there was a couple of good jokes in there. It was good. I didn't get I mean, I, I didn't watch the last fifteen minutes, so I started late. I got Netflix. I got to watch usually on flights you can't watch streaming videos, but on Jet Blues you get you get Wi Fi that's streaming you can watch streaming videos. Oh wow. So I watched the Netflix special, but it was like once you start you know, your approach, the Wi Fi goes out. So oh yeah, yeah. Last fifteen minutes of the of the, of the show. Of I the still haven't seen the last ten minutes of that walk the line movie because of that fucking approach fucking TVs go off shit. That fucking oh. that Re Really? Yeah. Walk the line? It's, yeah the, like last 10 minutes, I still I, I still never went back for it. Johnny Cash dies. Fuck. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I'm back there. I'm back in that plane. I'm back in that plane. No, who's special? I really love it. Was, it's one man show. Colin Quinn's New York story. I was going to watch that too. But That's fuck. He's so, I don't give a fuck. He's so brilliant, dude. That dude is fucking funny, man. And to do his his one like his one man shows are great, man. Was this a stand up show or more of a one man show? Still, it's a one man show. It's it's just okay. about New York, about all the different people okay. that live in New York, and it's. So I haven't seen the. Uh, he has. Does he have two of the politics? He has uh, the one about the Constitution, unconstitutional. Right. He's got this one, and did he do one more? I thought he did a second one to the unconstitutional, something similar. Yeah, I did. I'm trying, yeah, there was one before that. I gotta try and bring it up. Um, Carrie and I saw Unconstitutional live. Oh, long story short, that right, was about okay. the history of the world. Right, right, okay. That yeah, was yeah. good too. But this one, you'll love it, especially you know, growing up in this area. Right, right. Like, even though it's about New York, there's all these people are in New Jersey as well. Yeah, yeah, it's right. It's just, and you hang out in New York enough to know these. It's just hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't, and just to see someone stick on topic and like do a like a, an interesting show. Right. 
I don't know. I just find that to be like more to me. That format, when done right, is even better than stand up. Right. You know what I mean? Because there's no yeah, oh, yeah. there's no gimmicks, there's no tricks. It's it's like this. It's just it's amazing. It's like I'm in awe of. It's like Eddie, it's storytelling. It's storytelling Eddie, at the top level. Eddie, is it special that one years ago we dressed like a cross dresser? Yeah. And he just did like like pretty much a history, a brief. He just talked about the world and how it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it wasn't like a stand up stand up. Right. And it was fucking to me. It was one of the best things I've seen, like up to that point. No, it definitely inspired me. I want to yeah, watch yeah. more. I want to go check out Eddie, Eddie Izzard's. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thing. I just, I, I don't know. I found it. You know, like you know, we do. I think because we do stand up, it's just I don't. It's I'm tough to be impressed by a regular stand up show. Yeah, yeah. So like when you see, like I think Carlin was like that to an extent. He almost always had some sort of theme, or even Chris Rock. Like, no, they do. Like, yeah, it's Absolutely. like a theme. There's like a, like a, like There's a thing a, a about overall it. point to the like, whole thing. Yeah, and you're just like, man. And he sticks to it, and he he in the whole once you at the from the beginning to the end, you tie it all together. It's like, ah, oh, shit, that all tied together. Yeah, like yeah, like like a lot of comics have like a, like their theme is like themselves, and I'm bringing you teaching you about me, blah blah blah. Yeah. But like, yeah, it, it was just so good, man. I wasn't a lot of times I could watch a stand up show and be like. You know, there could be a chunk where you're like, eh, it's just, you know, yeah, and then yeah. you wait till the next chunk. You're like, All right. right. But this was just, I don't know. Awesome. I give it two thumbs up. Nice. Yeah. Coming from Joe Fernandez, two thumbs up. Means nothing, but I'm a regular person. <laughs> I do have an opinion. <laughs> you don't need me. Um, no. Nah. But yeah, there's a lot of stand up specials. It's just so many stand up specials. A lot of them I can't I've tried, I can't even get through. Right. You know? I just Yeah, it's uh it's tough. I like I I mean I'm thinking about like even Scott Brennan was like, Man, you really need to re- do a video, Mike. He's like, You're everything, like even when you're not being so f- physical, you're still physical. Right. Even like when you're not being like this in a physical joke, you're f- just the way you talk and your mannerisms and the way you look at somebody needs to be seen versus just heard. Yeah, your your act was not uh, – it's better for a video than CD for sure. So he's like, but, but I even with that knowledge, knowing that that's probably true, I'm like I, I want to I wanna tape – I want to video a show, but I want to make sure it captures everything I am in that moment. Yeah. I just – like I said about my CD, I feel like it didn't capture – all of me. And I just want something to capture a moment like like I had like last night was a really good show. But like the and I know it's it was a couple of weeks ago when I did the freaking church basement for the Episcopalians where you couldn't curse not even a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I was so in the moment, had such a good time. Yeah, being in them I think that's tough to be, especially when you know it's a taping. That's right. my big fear about taping my set. It's like and I know I saw you on stage and that you taped your set. It's like it's taping night. So yep. and I think that's maybe why, like when you see like comics or specials, you're like, ah, that's I've seen that guy live. That's not really capturing who he is, probably because right. it's fucking cameras and lights and fucking. We know it's the night, right? And there's like a lot riding on it, a lot of money riding on it, and you're just like, ugh. Yes. Very, very tough to be in the. Mo- that's my biggest fear. That that's why I wanted whatever I do. I got to do two shows because I know I'm not going to be in the as in the moment right. show one. Right. Or like when Dane Cook talked about his last special, he said there was so many problems with show one. He was all stressed out about show two. Oh, really? Because like show, he said usually show one goes good enough where you could be loose show two. He goes so much yeah. fucking shit happened in show one that he had to get it in show two. Really? <laughs> it's like. Yeah, I think. Like, and he said he wound up using more from show one with all the fuck ups. But in the, at the time, he didn't think it right. was up to. He was like, this isn't good. This is- this is failing. I got to get yeah. It's but not it working. wound up being the majority of his special. Is that the one he did in Vegas? Whatever the last one was, that Showtime one was. Uh, yeah, I think it was in Vegas. Yeah, it was like in a theater and yeah, but it was in a th- yeah, yeah, yeah. So he wound up using more from the show that he thought was not the show. Oh, okay, which is pretty interesting. Right, right, right. You know, I did. Yeah, that's 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 my big fear. But like, look at Sebastian. Now you watch Sebastian's first. Like his first Showtime special and his second time, like his third one, that this last one that he did at the Beacon, I think captured more of who he is live. Yeah, and plus he did seven nights like before that and got comfortable. That's, 
what I'm saying. He is at a level where he's he's cranking out the material and in front of large audiences every night of the week. It's not like he had to make a special night to pack an audience yeah. to do his show. Well, he said even on his podcast that that special wasn't even his best show of the week. Like It wasn't on his podcast. It was on somebody else's I, okay. I was listening to. And he th- it was like a couple days before. He was like, I wish that one was taped. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like it was like he was in the moment. Even a couple, yeah, yeah. It's we're just never happy. No, <laughs> it's just never happy. <laughs> but for him, he felt best like three nights earlier, right? Than, right. than the actual taping night. Because even yeah, probably yeah. got with Sebastian. It's like it's still it's fucking taping night. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's no, taping. it does. It does, especially when you're spending that much money on the production cost. But I think there's guys like maybe like a Chappelle or like even a Rock who is putting a lot of money into the special but is so confident that people are going to like it that he's all right. Yeah, and you're also like – and all these guys we're talking about, they're, the people are there for them. It's like this yes. fan base that's really – just yep. really into you. It's you – know. There's not much to prove. Right. They're yeah, happy even you're if, even filming a special, especially Chappelle. Like, holy shit, I'm at the fucking Dave Chappelle's special taping? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I was at Levity Live last Wednesday, and that was like the fourth time I think I've played there. Right, and it was the most comfortable. I, I felt was it a good sized crowd for that? It's like a mic thing, right? Yeah, they had like a bringer show where like each they had like eight comics bring ten people each. <laughs> oh, nice! So I went on like ninth, so actually tenth if you count the host. Right. Um. You so closed it. I was. It was supposed to just be me closing it, but then he put two of us, me and Kevin Downey Jr. So I was normally okay. supposed to do like twenty to a half, but he's like, he, fifteen. He's like, do you mind if we cut it? I'm like, the money's the same. I don't give a shit. Right, right. I would. I'll do whatever. And uh, but I even I took uh, Ritu and my friend Don with me to uh, you know to the show, and um, right. even they said I looked so comfortable up. Like I felt comfortable. Like. Okay. Because I've played the room enough where yeah, yeah, I right. just I just um you know, I was I knew some of the staff, like this whole right, comfort right. level going there, hey what's up, how you been? Yeah, absolutely. So it yeah, just yeah. carried on to stage and I felt so in myself, I'm like, Oh, this is how I want to always feel. Right. But I started off with something totally different. I was like, I'm just gonna 'cause I've been starting off with like all the dead dad stuff for like so long now to work it and I'm like, I'm just right. I'm gonna just do something different. You know what I mean? Because this is a long show. Let me be fun tonight. Why do I have to? I don't. Right. I don't have to be like. Let's think. You know. This, right. Right. Like this isn't my headline night. Like let's just fucking have fun. So I just went up talking about Fitbits and dieting right. and fucking exercising, and it was great. I'm like, right. ah, it felt. It just felt so good. Right. Right. You know. I was like, damn, that's the zone I want to be in. Like every night. It's hard though. No, I know it's hard, but you're like, I want that. Like you're like that. That moment. I could have stayed up there for 45 minutes. That's how in tune with the audience I was. Right, right. It was like, you know. Yeah, I, I think it's hard because uh, the consistency of performing in front of, <clears throat> like on a big stage, in front of a large crowd, doesn't happen enough. Right. In a row. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you're not always in a good venue where – Things are kind of set up for your show where you could just be, oh, what's up, man? I'm Joe Fernandez. It's always like, oh, we're at a fucking Knights of Columbus tonight, and then there's no stage, and the light doesn't work, and there's a back table who's drunk as shit, and this guy just you know, <laughs> dropped a tray of ZDs. And it's like, it's not always – we get at our level – like, I'm not saying it's still the same job, but you get – a like, I remember that years ago when we talked about Ralphie May. It was years ago when Ralphie May told – you should be able to work 20 minutes a month new or something. Remember that? Yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah. I was like, yeah. Do five minutes a month and you'll have an, a, an hour, and a new, a new hour every year. Which is, <laughs> and I said back then, and I'll say it again, and no disrespect to a guy like Ralphie or guys who do get, they've earned. Sebastian earned selling out theaters five nights a week. Yeah. He earned it. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Uh, Ralphie may earn that, but when you do five sold out shows – and you get to do an hour and a half five times a week yeah, in front of a crowd that's there for you, if you can't work out five new minutes, then you suck. Right. You know what I'm saying? With us, we are getting 
two nice crowds for a month and 13 weird audiences. You know what I'm saying? Right. We, we don't know what the venue was like. We don't know where it's at. So what the fuck are we doing? So to come up and be comfortable and so smooth on every one of those events is a lot to ask. No, totally. But I do – I'm definitely going to challenge myself because I feel – I don't know if you saw, I posted this article this comic wrote about his experience in comedy at the 10 year mark. I didn't read it, the 10 year thing. It's a very good article. I mean, it, I mean, he hits, like, he was like speaking my mind. You know what I mean? Like, he just, right. like, in, he, basically at the end, he's like, it took me 10 years to get write an hour. It took me to 10 years to, to write an hour. It took me 10 years right. to write, you know, a good hour that he's willing right, to record. Right. And you're like, yeah. yeah, it did. And I, and part of me was, like, I'm, I was thinking about that. The whole time, and I'm like, it took me this that long just to get comfortable. So I've been writing jokes the whole time. I believe once I record this act, and then I say like, I'm gonna work hard to do a new act. I'm just a comfortable comedian now. I think my writing, once I empty the well, yep. I just because I did at one point ten, well now thirteen years ago, had an empty well of no jokes. Right, right. And in thirteen years, I have well over an hour, but I would say an hour of good stuff. I do have a lot of ass stuff. (laughs) Like if you can't, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So I feel like this next one I write will be much quicker to get to. Right. Because I'm way right. more comfortable. And shit, right. Saturday night I did that Donald Trump stuff again off the just, and I added more stuff to it. And I'm like, right. I just, I'm just having fun up there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as opposed to that shit show we talked about last episode, like my shows this weekend were like, Right. Just oh, yeah. fun, man. I'm in the moment because I'm at Uncle Vinny's. I'm at Levity Live. I'm at right. Which was, you know, what it is like honestly. Like, I mean, I'm comedy shop. I've been working for for years, but I don't even perform there as much as these right. other clubs. I'm not even. I don't even have a comfort level there because you never know what room you're going to be in. <laughs> it could right, be right. Yeah, the yeah. small room, the big room, the medium room. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but there's a there's a comfort level. I, like I have audio. I'm going to play uh, of Saturday night. It's just some crowd interaction I did. So I'm okay. like, this is not anything I'm going to work on. It's just in the moment shit. It can't be jokes. Right. So I'm going to like really st- – I'm actually going to probably post it on like Facebook too with like some video. Uh-huh. I didn't take video, but I'm going to just put audio on their pictures of myself. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. But uh, but this is – you know, I think it shows a little bit of me being in the moment feeling good. Where is this at? This is at Uncle Vinny's. I was opening the show for Joey Vega. Okay. So I'm doing I'm – doing, I did the same thing as I did at Levity. I'm like, I'm not talking about my dad dying. I'm just going to go up, talk fun stuff. I talked about the holiday. I talked a little Trump at the beginning. Holiday. Right, right. So I was feeling so good. I was cursing a little more than normal, you know? Right. And then uh, and I see to the front of the stage, it looks like a little kid, like a teenager, like 12, 13 right. years old. And I'm like, oh, shit. So when I play, what you hear here is me. I'm addressing. I'm like apologizing to the kid. Oh, okay. Apologizing. I'm saying so many bad words. Right, right. But it's ten o'clock on Saturday. Like I don't even. Yeah, it's, and yes. then and then a, a, a drunk woman to the left is like, like I'm giving him attention, so she's like she wants attention. Ugh. Like I, I'll just play the clip and you can see what the, okay. what it is. I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm cursing so much, little dude. I apologize. <laughs> okay, that's good. I'll curse more than he gave me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's okay, I like that shit. You're 24. You're 24? Oh my god! You're aging like amazingly. <laughs> Is this Benjamin Button? <laughs> like, you are. A... I was like, oh, what happened? What? You're 53? Cool. <laughs> All right, that's this is the mad lab part of my show. How old is everybody? <laughs> you know Twenty, twenty-four, twenty-three. Twenty-three. Forget that. Forget that. She's like, fuck him. Talk to me. I'm fifty-three, motherfucker. You do look great for fifty-three. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Fuck, him. fuck you. Wow, very hostile towards this young man who you've never met before. And this is what ladies are going to be like the rest of your life. I just think. <laughs> Very hot and cold. You know, she probably walked by a few times on the moment the attention was on you. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Where to go there? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's okay. Cool. He's not my son either. He's not your son? Oh, wow. We're really getting deep with this, aren't we? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> this offering up weird family shit right now. He's not my son. I don't know where we got him. Found him on the road one day. I thought it was a little kid I'm stealing. Apparently, he's 24. What? You can see his ID. I don't want to see his ID. I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. <laughs> oh, he's your friend, okay. I, I didn't even think it was your son. Do, do people get that? Do that to you a lot? Like, your son, your son's freaking me out. What? It's a hell no. It's a hell what? No, he's not Oh, it's a hell no. He's wow. This is a nice little friendly bond we have here at table 18 or whatever the fuck is good. Ooh. Yikes. Ooh. You guys live in the pines? I was, I was curious. That was good. I'd high five. I had no idea where that was going when I was going to apologize to the little boy. <laughs> you gotta love live entertainment. It's just really the best. There's nothing like it. It's food. Let's get back to food. <laughs> where do you go? We'll get, we'll get back on my food topic. Losing weight. <laughs> okay, that was it. <laughs> I couldn't you gotta tell me what happened because it was very muffled in the beginning oh uh, okay so you went you went to see the kid I go, and then I couldn't understand a word until I don't know if you messed with the the uh, levels and then it cleared up before yeah the it first. sounded good in my headphones hopefully it'll sound good in the podcast um, okay so, so when you re- addressed the kid he wasn't a teenager no he's 23 happened? Okay. And I go, holy okay. shit, man, you're aging amazingly. <laughs> and I asked who was Benjamin Button, and that's when the girl goes, I'm 53. And then oh, that's, and I heard that. That's when it starts to clear up. Oh, yeah. Then I'm I'm like, yeah, this is what we're going to be your whole life, buddy. Yeah, yeah. A little, yeah. little hot, little cold. The moment the tension's on you, fuck him. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I think she actually said fuck him. But I was like, that, I was just feeling so good that night. I could have just talked to them. Right, right, right. The, they were just. Like I was sitting there and Who was so- saying yikes like four times. Like, yikes, yikes! The woman just kept saying yikes. I'm like, for what are you? What is this Scooby Doo <laughs> episode? Shut up! <laughs> I know. I know. Yikes! Yikes! <laughs> yeah. uh, I kept like I'm like, how do you know? Because you were talking to the kid, and I don't know what happened. The, the mother, that's not his kid, her kid. Yeah, it's not her kid. He was just a friend. Of, it looked like a family. It was like a woman, a dude, and two young-looking kids. Right, right. I mean, the, the girl didn't look as young as him. He literally looked like 12 or 13 years old. Wow. And I didn't even notice him. And he was literally right in front of the stage, but he must have had his head down when I got up there. Just yeah, 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 about, yeah. I don't know, six minutes into my set. Right. And I'm it's like, funny. If I have, a, I have a clip from my show on Saturday night with the same thing, a kid right in the front row. I thought was like, I said, how old are you? When he said 24, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I think you're 12 years old. Yeah. And then his dad's like, good genes. Like, and I was like, dude, I didn't say you look good. <laughs> I'm <laughs> saying your son look good. Like, <laughs> I didn't ask you your age yet, but you want me to guess? <laughs> so annoying. How old are you, buddy? That's fucking why the fat guy's following me. Yeah. Um, how old are you? Why are you looking a little younger? I don't know. 24. I'm just going to give my ID to everywhere, man. <laughs> cool. Thanks for the backstory. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people try to catch me up on their life. But anyway, no, you look young. You look young, so you're saying you get ID'd. Don't get protected, Dad, because I don't give a fuck either, okay? You know, do you try to protect this 24-year-old little young little kid? He looks like he's 12. I know. Right? Good genes. What? Good genes. Okay. Cool. Okay. Whatever you gotta say to help yourself sleep. Uh, I just take the kid looks young. I don't know what your genes. Uh, I didn't call your age yet. You might want to slow down on that. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, but my uh, my son is just I don't know, man. You get you, you got any children? Stay What do you have? 
What do you have? What is it? Uh, is it? What, exactly. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> is that how you look at it every day? What the fuck is that? I don't know. What, what is that? One girl and three boys. And how old the oldest? Three boys. 19. And what's the youngest? Eight. Scattered so, it out, got no cable, just fucking. Okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> having babies, man. <laughs> hey, not on TV, man. Want to have a baby? All right, folks. <laughs> Walk caught up and breaking bad, you want to fuck? Walk getting on, want to have some sex? <laughs> 19 to 8. Woo. One girl, how old, who's the oldest? 19, 19, 19, 13, and 8. 19, I can show up. Hopefully, it was two different things that came together. <laughs> that would fuck me up. I wouldn't be able to do that, man. I know black people have babies in here, but not that weird. That's a weird black baby combination over there. Are they twins? Nah. Are they the same age? Mm -hmm. Yeah, same age. Oh, I don't know how that happened then. But now I got it here. I came together. I got it. Uh, Man, I want to be black. Just saying. Just saying. I just said it. I'm a little jealous. There you go. You happy? I'm jealous of black dude swag. I don't know, man. It's how you walk. Like you're always in a music video. Like, like you're like, what's up, motherfucker? Man, I want to do that. Even if you're like a high-paid lawyer, you still got to walk. Like, what's up? Man. I want to do that, but you make fun of me. Do you ever see what a white dude does? They always hop it. Like, what's up, man? Like, man. Have me angry. You fucked your ankle up? Why are you walking like that? That's why I want to be black. Not like for I don't like want your whole experience. Uh, like 10, 15 minutes, you know what I'm saying? You got me until the cops come, I want to go back to being white. Well, I ain't going to look fun anymore. It looks like it stopped being fun. White people right now that are near you want to laugh, but they can't because you're too close. Like, uh, hey, man, can I text you with LOL or something? Uh, the black guy's right here, man, eye contact with me. I don't really want to laugh at that joke, but, uh... Um, <laughs> yeah, man, but it's, it's just, like, it was fun to have, like, these fun crowds this weekend where it was just... Did you like, work all weekend? No. Wednesday, Levy tu Live. Yeah, Tuesday I was at Gotham, but that got canceled. Then I went to the, the roast battle, which was fun. KP murdered. Oh, yeah? Yeah, man. KP versus Mike Salona. And but K did he murder? Because Mike Salona, he did, it just did well in general. Well, he was so nervous before. The, like, we were yeah, yeah. eating before, and I'm like, I'm like, I get your anxiety, dude. I would have anxiety, too. You know, yeah, I've, yeah. it's not something I, I – I wouldn't even roast battle. That's how much anxiety. Yeah, yeah, right. So you're, I was like, but you have good jokes, man. You have so like that should make you feel better. Like you have really good jokes. Right. And once you get that first laugh, you'll. I know you'll. Yes. Yes. And um and he had like a couple duds that we told him right. not to do. And then um but I said like when he read when we looked at his jokes, I'm like that one should be first. You'll he'll be on the ropes. Like yeah, you're yeah. gonna right go so back. that if that's your first one. So we get there. He's real nervous, but he, not as nervous as like before we were even at the club. Once we got to the club. Then he, you know, he saw Big J, and, yeah, and he's, yeah, yeah. he's like, oh. I'm like, just, you know, you're right. you're here, man. You, you got to do it. Yeah, yeah. So, but I was nervous for him. I'm sitting there. I went there with Natty, uh, Natty Bumper Car, Jackie Byrne, her fiance. Oh, yeah. Natty Bumper. Car. I had the I had the class. I had to put Bumper Car out there in case you knew another Natty. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, but we're all nervous for him. And Mike Salona's podcast partner, uh, Nigel. Right. And it's packed. I mean, the, the stand's a small club, but it was yeah, yeah. it was jam packed, and the hosts were. I mean, the judges were Rich Voss, Mike Lawrence, Big J Okerson, Dave Smith, and Adrian Iapalucci. Oh wow! And um, so uh, you know, when KP goes up, they had one roast before that was pretty good, and then he goes up, and uh, Salona get like uh, loses the coin toss, and then KP's like, "I'll defer. Let's him go first. Which is okay. good. Let him either hit you yeah, hard because yeah. his joke is that good. You can go first or second. That yeah, joke's yeah, going to yeah. go good unless that motherfucker had a crazy joke. Right, right. So uh, Salona did well too. Okay. But KP just did a little bit better. But he was doing so good. I mean, he had one one of the jokes he told him not to do did die. And he like threw the card to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but he knew it. But I was watching Voss and Big. They loved KP. Really? 
and I can see it while it's going on because I mean right. he's making them die with these quick roast jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just tit for tat one after the other. They right. o- both did five jokes, and when they, the judging came around, because <laughs> they were they were they were roasting them as they came up. They said KP looked like a wrestling coach because yeah. like, he had the <laughs> zip up fucking sweat jacket on. Right. And uh but they said it was the best roast battle debut they've seen in a long time. Oh really? KP's nice. and they really want to see more of him there. I'm like, dude, you gotta you better get back here, man. Yeah. That's you awesome. just had like top New York comedians tell you your jokes were awesome. Right. And it was the best debut they've seen in a while. You can't let this shit fucking go away. Absolutely. Like I was so proud of him. You know, like when you when you watch your friend fucking kill yeah. on like a I, I, it's like, like the biggest stage, but it's a big stage, man. Like these right. are like legit comics that you look up to. They're some of the best joke writers in the country. Right. Actually, yep. not even New York. Big J, Mike Lawrence, Rich My Voss. Own, yeah. They're yeah. like, especially Mike Lawrence. He's the roast battle champion of Comedy yes. Central. Right, right, right. And for him to say that to you, it's like, oh my, like you, that should make you feel good, man. Yeah. But yeah, I was absolutely. sitting there like, fucking yes, man. Nice. It was, it was good. It was, I was proud Who of him. won the whole night. Well, it was – these were all just like individual. Right. And then they had some – this one at the end, this this funny comic who I've met recently, Corey Rapond. He's uh, very good at roasting and he roasted okay. Victor Venardo. Know. You know, Victor Venardo is like a like a, like an albino black oh, guy yeah, in the yeah, city. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, Corey's just a good joke writer, good roaster and Victor looked like he'd never watched a roast before. Like he'd, he even admitted that. He's like, I never saw one of these. So he was like doing stuff that just wasn't hitting, but he had all this yeah, yeah. energy. So right. it was kind of funny in a weird way because he was sucking so bad that like Corey like was wiping the floor like every round. Right. So it shouldn't even have went to a third round, but the judges were like, we just want to see what other shit you're going to fucking say. <laughs> so we're going to give you the second round just to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third round. How bad be. It was funny because like he came out in third round with like a really good one. Like, holy fuck, <laughs> this big <laughs> backfire. And for a second, but it, you know, it was it was a fun night. I I actually had a good time okay. at a comedy show because it was something I never normally yeah, attend. Right. You know, and it was I, I don't know the other guys. The other actually, uh, Paul Spratt, your friend Paul Spratt, was one round. Oh, okay. Um, he got destroyed by this other kid. Okay, but only because. I don't know if he was nervous. He was like just kind of not uh, – he was like flubbing his lines a little bit. And, you know, when you do a roast joke, it's got to be said smooth. Right. Like it was a good joke, but if you go like a – Yeah. It yeah, just like totally yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> takes yeah, the seam out, you know. Yeah. Um, but it was fun. KP was good. and uh, But, yeah, I just – I was in the city. I did Levity Wednesday. Then I had uh, Saturday, Uncle Vinny's. But it was good to get those – Fun shows, those fun audiences, and feeling like in the moment after Who that shit show. Who was on the show with you Saturday? Joey Vega, just me and Joey Vega. Oh, that's Vega. right, yeah, yeah. Was it a big crowd? The- yeah, it was, I'd say, uh, you know the room, Uncle Vinny's, the whole front was uh, full, and then there was like okay. a few tables in the back, so it was oh, okay. It was good, you know, for non-name comics, drawing, yeah, yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like a non-drawing comics on a show. And they right. would just, you go in there, you just see it, like there's a buzz in the room, like, yeah, like yeah, a lot yeah. of chatter. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, there's, like, I went up there. Yeah, you can know that's a fun Saturday night. It's going to be a fun Saturday night. Yeah, a little shit. Ch- like, which I didn't know about levity because by the time I got up, the show was uh, got to be almost on for two hours. Right. And people have, like, you know, these bringer shows, like some of these bringer comics perform. And done. then they, they're like a whole table of 10 will leave. Yeah, yep. So, like, there was like these, these uh, pockets right. in the audience by the time I got up. And then you don't know if these people are drained. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I went up there, like, but then when I got up there, I felt so good. Like I've been here so many times already. Yeah, yeah. That I was like, I don't care what you guys are. I'm having. I feel good right now. <laughs> right. And I, that I think that helped right, facilitate right. the because uh, the guy before me was like, I felt bad for him. He was a bringer comic. But they dropped checks on him. Oh really? So like, wow, that sucks. That's tough when you know that's coming. Right. When you're got experience. Yeah, yeah. To navigate a check spot. There's some kind of audio issue coming on. Is there? Well, it just keeps like breaking up. Uh, well, I don't know if it's like it's not on this end. It's not on this well, end. I'm hearing you. You're breaking up to me. Oh, okay. Do you want me to call you back? No. Oh, that's fine. I'm just saying maybe it was a connection. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. No. Was, Joey it, Vega. Joey Vega is in one of my favorite movies, though. Which movie? Rounders. What? I don't even know he was in Rounders. Yeah, he's in. Uh, he's one of the 
guys at the table playing uh playing down Atlantic City. Oh, I gotta watch it again. Just I he's what a nice guy, man. It was my first time working with him. I don't know I never I don't think I ever met him. Maybe once. He opens on the road for Mark Anthony constantly, the singer. That's his gig. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh nice dude, man. Funny. I, I only watched half of his set because right. I had to get home and get to bed, but uh like storyteller type guy, like not high energy. You know? Right. Oh, he's not? No, he's not high energy, but good st- he it reminded me because he's telling stories about, you know, being Catholic and like yeah, uh, it was almost like I was listening to a family, like like my uncle Ray, tell us stories. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Right. It was. He, uh, yeah, he was in the scene during Atlantic City when uh, when they're down at the at the Taj, and uh, John Tatoro, what is his name, John Tatoro? Yeah, sits down and goes. That's why I like to see Mikey sitting down with the scumbags raking the occasional pot. Yeah. And then Joey Vega goes, yeah. Occasional, like my wife occasionally cheats on me. Uh, Joey Vega. I got to go back. I mean, I never need an excuse to watch that movie over and over again. But now <laughs> I'm definitely going to be Netflixing. Yeah. Who else is at that table? Alan, uh, what's his name? Alan Havy. I know, I recognized Alan Havy because Alan Havy, yeah. uh, Joey Vega, and uh, I think there's one other comic at that table. Uh, yeah, I don't know how the, all the comics got in that. That would be a perfect movie for you. Fucking rounders. I want to actually play. Like, can we play? <laughs> <laughs> like, if they pan and, like, it's like you have to have, like, the losing face on, be like, Mike's not acting. Yeah. <laughs> Mike just lost. <laughs> Mike's on the phone calling Joe. Why is he calling Joe? Oh, he's asking for money. Mike, that wasn't real money, man. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I knew you were having a good time at fucking uh, Jacksonville. I'm like, he hasn't texted me about any. Anybody that's opening for him yet? <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> they were just really nice guys, and the guy Doug Can- Canny, C A N N E Y. Would you say Canny or Caney? C A N N E Y. C A N N E Canny. Canny. Doug Canny. Caney. I'd probably say Canny if it was a K, but I'd say Canny if it was a C. Okay. Um, Why I have no idea, but that's just what I would do. <laughs> nice guy it's been like he was he was a musician he's 50 something 52 53 years old he was a musician like in a lot of rock bands he was a guitarist uh-huh. nice guy and then uh i guess about 10 years ago he said he started doing comedy eight ten years ago okay you froze up yeah you froze up too but we're still we're, I, we still have the audio all right, so yeah, you're not moving. Your face is not a good look. No, I know. I see my face frozen. My computer's frozen, but we're still having audio come through. Am I moving? Or, or no, you're, you're no, you're you're. I'm you, frozen too. You're frozen. Oh, you're back. And now you're gone back to. Fr- but see, I'm not frozen on my end, so it's got to be your end. Could be. Because if you're yeah, frozen my computer's on- been acting weird. That's why I don't record the audio on the computer no more. It goes to a recorder to okay. stop the fucking the shit. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you're good. You like that? Your <laughs> what? Your face just look like. I'm like back a now. Now you're back. No, I'm back. Um, yeah. Anyway, they were nice people. They were a nice group. I mean, like, uh, like I said, I was a little not nervous. I wasn't nervous, but when I when I heard the story of the club and was looking at the website, I was like, well, I'm not that kind of comic, but I'm not. I can be. Um. I wish I'm. I wish I didn't record the one with the fourteen black people. That's the. I didn't audio record that. Yeah, and that would have been great just to show. But I have like from Saturday Night Show. I have what they what I call a survival bit. Okay. And it's. I wasn't. I didn't need to survive, but I knew that it would just destroy this room. And this room was sixty forty, maybe seventy thirty, seventy percent white people, thirty percent black people. It was so weird. They sat them. All the black people on the left, all the white people in the middle to the right. I'm like, they didn't mix them up at all. I even like made the club segregated. Yeah, the they club. had a Mason Dixon line up in, the- within the club. Yeah. yeah, and I was there was like a back table uh, of black people who were like one of the, the feature acts is kind of new in comedy. He's like been only doing two years. He was doing like a ten minute spot, and I guess his family came out to see him. Friends, uh huh. So. I can see their table in the back lit up most of the time with them on their phones. Yeah. 
there was like six of them back there. But I'm like, I'm going to do this joke because I guarantee you their phones will go off of this. Yeah. And it's the Chinese restaurant joke. And the Chinese restaurant fucking murders. Uh huh. But it's a joke that I'm only doing for the pure reason it murders. Right, right. I'm not doing it because I'm super duper proud of my writing ability. Right. I'm not doing it because it's so creative. Yeah. I'm doing it purely because I know it, they're going to enjoy it. Yeah. And it's strictly for the show. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I had that from Saturday. Maybe. I mean, I don't think I'll be able to get it to you. Well, uh, I'm, I can wait to upload this till tonight. Um, if you want to get me that other clip that you talked about before with the young kid, if you have it. Oh, yeah. And I'll if you get me this clip, it. I'll pop it in because I have okay. to really wrap this up and go get Justin. He's got his first okay. driving school class. Live in my, where I live in Jersey, I've been calling the same Chinese joint. Like I, I love Chinese food, man. I don't know if there's any really good joints around here, but in Jersey, there's a place. I've been ordering from the same place for 25 years. The name of my place is Dragon Garden. Same lady's been answering for 25 years. Hello, Dragon Garden. Every time I call. Hello, Dragon Garden. Hello, Dragon. She's the same lady for everybody. Hello, Green Rock of China. Hello, Golden Wow. Like, hello. Is there only one phone? How is the same lady answering every phone? It's always the same thing. So I'm like, yeah, let me get a chicken chow mein, a wonton soup, and an egg roll. Okay. You want one chicken chow mein, one wonton soup, and one egg roll? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a 10, 15 minute. It's always 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> right? No matter what the fuck you order, it's always 10, 15 minutes. No matter how big yours, so I got mad. I'm like, you know what? Hold up. Make that 15 chicken chow mains. <laughs> 10 wonton soups and five egg rolls. And she accepted my challenge. She's like, oh, 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 you fat fucking white boy. So you want a 15 chicken chow me and a 10 wild car soup and a 5 egg roll? Yeah, it was like an hour. No, 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> I was in Chicago. I think it was Chicago and I was looking to eat. Chinese, I looked in the yellow page, there was a place called Dragon Garden. I know it's not my Dragon Garden, because I'm not from Chicago, but I called it anyhow. If you ever call a Chinese restaurant and a Chinese person not answer, ah. fuck me up. <laughs> <laughs> I called it, yeah, you know, Dragon Garden. I'm like, Dragon Garden? He's like, yeah, what can I get you? An Asian. Get the fuck off the phone. <laughs> I'm not ordering with you. I'm going to get my meat full for me. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. Sorry for the abrupt end. <laughs> um, go to uh, MikeGaffneyLive.com. Uh, go to JoeFernandez.net to see our future dates. Um, you've been listening to All in Our Heads. Mm-hmm.